Hey and welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're going to take a look at sections in Swift UI. Sections allow us to break up and group our content within lists. If you check out my previous video, lists in Swift UI, you should see how we set up a basic list and everything you need to know about them. In this video, we're going to see how we can control grouping them and also what sections provide too. So building on top of our list in Swift UI example, let's actually create a section in Swift UI. So around our products list, Let's actually wrap this in a section with a title and we'll type this one out together. So what you want to do is within your list here, you just want to hit enter and then you just want to type out section. Cool. And when you're working with sections, you'll see that you have quite a few different initializers that you can use. So you have an initializer where you can actually pass it a localized string key. You have an initializer where you can pass it a title. And you also have an initializer where you can pass in your own custom content with a header and a footer. So depending on which one you use, you get different functionality. So the one we're going to go for in this example is the simplest one, which is simply going to be a title and the content that you want to put in a section. So let's do that now. So for our section title, I'm just going to type in here. And then for our content, what we want to do is we want to actually define that we want to put our list items here within this section. So let's actually copy this for each and we'll paste it inside of our section like so. So now that we've done that, if you look at our example here, I'm just actually just going to change this so it just looks bigger on an iPhone 11. So now if you look at our examples from our previous video, when we actually place our for each within a section, you can see here that the title is displayed above the section here. So my favorite products and it's automatically turned into uppercase as you can see here. So it's uppercase the section title for us. So on the automatic style, you can see it looks like this. But if we go down to the plain style, you'll notice that it actually doesn't uppercase our header. It actually just renders it how we've typed it out. And this time you can see where it's placed as well. And if we just keep going down, you'll see our group style one is giving it a uppercase and placed it here. And on our inset style, it's similar to before, but this time our header is being inset to the left a bit more. And then finally on our grouped inset, you can see that it's all uppercase and it looks similar to our automatic. So depending on which style of list you use, you can see that your section headers will actually get different types of effects. So you can either get them uppercase or just being rendered out normally. So now that we saw this, we're actually able to also add in headers and footers to our content as well with sections. So let's see what this looks like and how they differ on different styles. So let's actually rename our items and this time we're going to call it favorite items. So rather than us having this items here, we're just gonna call this favorite items like so. And I'm just gonna reduce this from one to uh, five. Yeah, let's do five, cool. And now we're actually going to get an error here because we don't actually have a reference to items anymore. So let's actually replace that with this because that's what we wanna use now for our for each. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm actually going to create another list of items, but this time it's gonna be called product. So let's do that now. So now that we've got that, let's actually create a, another section, but this time we're actually going to create a section with both a header and a footer. So just below the first example that we have here, let's just hit enter. And then when we type out section, you'll notice that you actually have these options. So if you wanted to, you could actually add in your content with a header and a footer. Now it's also worth noting as well that the header and the footer closure are actually both optional. So you don't actually need to have a header and a footer. You could just have a header or just a footer or none of them at all. But we wanna add in both so we can just see what this looks like. So you wanna make sure that you select this example here and then hit enter. And then when you hit enter, you should realize that you have these three closures where you can put your content. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just copy in our for each here. But this time, rather than it being for the favorite items, we want this to be for the products. So let's do that now. And then within our header, we're just going to put in some text. And then within our footer, we're just going to put in some information as well in our footer. So let's just hit resume. And now, if we go all the way back up to the top, 
you'll notice that in our first example that we look at with the list tile, we actually now have our header, which is being rendered out the exact same as our title here. But this time, we actually have a footer at the bottom of our section here to describe some information. So this is useful when you're actually building controls or if you have a form, but you need to give some users like some additional information. You can actually add that information within the footer to explain to them what's actually going on or what they need to do. So you can see with automatic, it does it here like this. But if we go down to plain style, you'll notice that the style of our footer is actually completely different. It actually looks like one of the item cells. So it actually adds it in as if it's like one of the items within the list on the plain style. So there's no style on it. If we go to group style, you'll notice it's similar to our first example of automatic. And we go down to inset style, you'll see that it's very similar to our plain style. And it's also inset with the other items. And then finally on an inset group style, it's similar to our first example as well. So now that you can see that our title and footer are pretty much the same, what is the actual difference? So what would be the benefit of you actually adding in a header manually with a text view rather than just actually typing out, you know, the header here? Well, there's a few things. The first thing is, if you actually go down this route here, there's actually no way for you to actually customize and style your header. So within these closures, you're actually able to return any kind of view. And we're not just limited to using text here. If we wanted to, we could actually add our own, you know, image, for example. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to create um, this header here, but we're actually going to pass in an SF symbol. And if you want to learn more about SF symbols, then check out my video in the Swift UI session playlist, SF symbols in Swift UI. So rather than having a text here, I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down. Okay, cool. So what we've got here is we've now got our image with our SF symbol and we just applied some styles onto it. But notice now how we're able to add an image as the section header and we're not just limited to adding in some text. So we can actually do our own customization here and actually create rich lists with different section headers. So for me personally, this is one of the benefits of actually using the header closure over a you know string key now if you just need a string key then by all means do this because it actually reduces the amount of code that you need to write but if you need to add some customization then it makes sense for you to have the header so the final thing that i want to touch on is a new modifier that's been given to us in swift ui now when you're actually working with section titles like so or headers you know you can actually add in your own styles to customize them here like we did but there's actually a new modifier in Swift UI that actually allows us to actually increase the size of our title headers automatically with this modifier. So let's actually add this on now. So on your section, if you were to type out dot header prominence, what this will allow you to do is actually control the size of your header. So you can see here that by default, the size is standard. But if we wanted to, we could actually increase the size of it by passing it increased. And now you'll see that compared to before, our header is now increased and we also get a bold like kind of style on it. And this is basically the system applying the, you know, system style onto the header for us. So rather than you having your own, you know, custom styles, if you just want a header that's more bold and matches the iOS, you know, human interface guidelines, then you can apply this header prominent style. So you look at it on the automatic style, it looks like this. I can see that on the plain style, it actually has no effect at all. So on group style as well, similarly, it doesn't actually have an effect either. And even on inset style, it doesn't as well. But if you go to inset grouped, it does. So it's also worth noting as well that based on the style that you're using, this modifier can have different styled effects. So there's a couple of things that you want to think about here when you're working with this modifier. It may just be easier for you to just do a custom header style so it's consistent on all the styles that you're working with. All right. Cool. So that's everything in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you left a comment in the comment section below with some feedback. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.